Imagine being in a relationship with a narcissist. You got nowhere to go. You're stuck. You're thinking, I've had it. I can't do this anymore. Not like this anymore. I just might as well call them out on this and start the battle. Whatever. Or you could do these five things I'm going to recommend that are a lot better than that. So before we get into it, like and subscribe. It helps the channel out. I'm terribly grateful. I love the subscribers that keep coming back and watching and come on, let's get into it. So you're in a relationship with a narcissist. That's never good. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Okay. So <laughs> also you're contemplating calling them out. You've seen all these videos. There's got to be a better way. I'll tell you why it's not a good idea to call a narcissist out. One, because it escalates them. Narcissists don't have a whole lot of tools. They just don't have a whole lot of tools. And in their mind, it's all a mental battlefield. So they're on offense or defense, and they expect you to be the same. And so if you call them out, which one is that, right? They might go a little defensive, but mostly it's offensive. They just ratchet it up. Oh, so you're calling me out. Well, now I need to hammer you harder. I need to go more abusive, more arguing, more yelling, more dig into you deeper. All of the abuse, more abuse, more devaluing, more gaslighting, the whole works. Calling a narcissist out just gets things to be worse. Now, in the long run, it might help, but why? You don't need to go there. You do not need to go there. The main reason why you shouldn't call them out as a narcissist is because you should never show the narcissist your hand, right? They use everything you show them against them, against you, everything. Your secrets, your desires, your wants, the things you love, the things you hate, they use it all against you. Everything you know, everything you say, everything you promise, they use it against you at whatever time is suitable to degrade you. That's what they do. That's their thing. And if you say they're a narcissist, now they know what they're fighting against. Now they know it's time to ratchet up the abuse and or do whatever they have to do. You should never show your hand to a narcissist. You should not. Knowing this information gives you the upper hand for once, right? They always want the upper hand because they're on this mental battlefield and they always want battlefield superiority. Now you can have a sort of superiority. Now you're the good guy. You're being attacked. You're being unjustly attacked by a narcissist. And so don't worry that you have superiority. This is a little program that the uh, narcissist can put in people's heads that if you have superiority, it's like, oh, so you're superior now. Oh, well, let me salute you. You're, you know, they degrade you. They want, they get that programming into your head that you shouldn't be above anybody. You shouldn't be beyond anybody in any category because they don't want you to be in any category <laughs> And in any way above them. That's what the programming is. It's good to have something on the narcissist that they don't know about because you're being attacked. It's like if somebody broke into your home and was strangling you, wouldn't you want some weapon or some release or some situation that you had and could go to to get you out of that attack? Of course you would. Well, you're being attacked almost daily by the narcissist, definitely on a regular basis. You need some kind of trick to get out of it, something to help you. And this is it. Knowing that they are a narcissist is a big, big, big step up. It gives you a big advantage in this battle, this war with the narcissist. Every home of a narcissist is a battlefield. And whether you like it or not, that's what it is. Either you're the survivor on the battlefield or you're getting torn to shreds six ways from Sunday. I've been there, dude. I know what it's like to be torn to shreds six ways from Sunday. But I also know what it's like to be at the top of the totem pole, to be in charge of the narcissist. 
and finally have some kind of to an inkling of sanity in your house, in your life, in your soul. Because this is what it will give you. You finally know, you finally have a label to this craziness. And then when you have a label to this craziness, it kind of rains it all in. You're like, oh, so that's why they do that. So that's why I feel like that. So that's why I'm thinking that. Yes, that's it. And you should never show your hand like that. Not to the narcissist, because once, if you do, all that stuff you're realizing, they'll gaslight the hell out of and tell you you're not realizing it. And then mix it up and then mix you up and then mix. You see, don't give it away. Once you realize they're a narcissist, keep that information to yourself. It's going to bring sanity to your life. So when you come to this situation, now you realize it's not a good decision to call them out because they're just going to escalate. Everything's going to get worse. And then you just gave away, <laughs> you just gave away your hand. It, it doesn't make any sense. So you have to make the decision. I'm not going to call them out. I'm going to keep this to myself. And once you make that decision, things start to get better, at least inside of you. And the reason why is because you start to realize this is a real thing. Narcissist is a real thing and they are really a narcissist. And what that means is they're never going to change. You are not going to magically convince them. <laughs> they're not going to Oh, yes, I'm a narcissist. Sorry, let's live normal lives now. That's never going to happen. You're never going to convince them. You're never going to convince them that they're wrong and that you're right. You're never going to uh, change them and solve them. Because even if you were a therapist living with them, it's still not going to happen because they have to want to change and be better people and whole thing about narcissism is they think they're superior to everybody else why would they want to change and it really doesn't even matter because they're not listening to you anyway they're just countering everything you say with gaslighting so it doesn't get to them and they can get it's a it's about them gaslighting themselves to believe that they're superior to you and it's also about using that gaslighting to knock you down and knock you off your center that's all it's about so if you say you're a narcissist and blah, 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 they're not going to listen to that anyway. They're, you're just giving away your knowledge. And they're like, okay, well, I'll use all that against you now too. So what do you do in the meantime? Well, gray rocking is an excellent situation, uh, an excellent tactic to use. Gray rocking is just, the narcissist likes this battle. They like to say stuff and hurt you and get under your skin and that's the whole thing. But what if it didn't? What if you didn't react to anything or minimally reacted to anything? They start to starve for more of this. They think, see they don't have, they don't cherish intimacy. They don't get anything from intimacy. What they do cherish is their ability to affect people and have those people affected and see that back. They feel that they, aha, I got under their skin. I made them angry. Two thumbs up for me, two thumbs up for me. I got it, right? Because they're trying to, uh, you're another combatant on their mental battlefield. So they're trying to set you off center and knock you down, all that stuff. And if you're not affected. So imagine a battlefield where there are troops just walking across the battlefield and shots and artillery are everywhere and these troops are totally unaffected and just keep walking like it's nothing, right? <laughs> Doesn't make them feel very good. So the narcissist usually escalates their attack in the beginning, right? Because maybe what I'm doing isn't enough. Maybe what I'm doing needs to be escalated. It needs to be harder. It needs to hurt more. And that's what they do in the beginning. So what does this look like in daily life? Well, it's sticking to insignificant and trivial topics. You don't give the narcissist anything meaty to sink their teeth into. They're going to pry for that. They're going to they're gonna dig for that. They're going to want to know what's going on in your life. 
Not that I don't care what's going on in your life. They want you to open up to them so they can get their hooks in you and start pulling you into them and puppet you like Pinocchio. That's what they want to do. They don't care about your life. They're not listening to you. Don't tell them anything of any real value. The weather's nice. Look at the weather. The weather's very hot today. Yeah, it's very hot. Yeah, stuff like that. That's part, because if you have to live with a narcissist, you actually have to live in the same house with a narcissist, then yeah, you have to say something, but you never say anything deep. You don't say, you don't say anything of any value. It, it, because they set it up as a battlefield, you're in a battlefield. It's just the way it is. As long as you stay there, that is a battlefield. And you don't give anything away to the opposition on a battlefield. It has to be all trivial intel. It can't be anything major. You don't even tell them your favorite movie. You don't tell them your favorite show. You don't tell them what you did when you went out. You don't tell them you made new friends. You don't tell them what you did at work. Nothing. If they ask, just downplay it. The narcissist does that all the time, right? So let's say big things happened at your job and you'd love to tell somebody. Don't tell the narcissist because they use that against you. You know they will. And when the narcissist says, so how, how, do, how are things going at your job? They say, oh, nothing special. You don't hear about it. It's all boring. And they might even say, yeah, yeah, I do. Absolutely. And, and you say, no, no, I'm not going into boredom because I already did that and I'm done with it and now I'm home and I'm going to do this now. Done. So what kind of relationship is this? The third thing you got to realize, that this is a zombie relationship. It's not dead. It's not alive. I don't know what it is. But when you're in a relationship with a, with a narcissist, I almost said a Nazi. <laughs> What kind of, when you're in a relationship with a narcissist, it's not real love, right? You know that. It's, it's hate love. Everything with the narcissist is, is push, pull, hate love, on and off. I, I love you now. I hate you and despise you later. I give you favors now. I take them back. I do fair things and then I do unfair things. It's all like that. And then you can't adopt their rules because their rules are hypocrisy. It's the same thing. You have to be, you know, you have to be the victim and they have to be the abuser, but they flip it back where you have to be the abuse, look like the abuser and they play the victim. It's all this, all this, all the time. So you have to realize that this is not a real relationship. It's not really alive. It's never going to grow. They're never going to grow. They're not going to make a realization. They're never going to change. They don't want to change. They don't see any reason for it. That's why they keep asking you to change. And realize that this is a nearly unchangeable, unless the, all the stars align, personality disorder. It's a serious thing. It just doesn't... You, they don't just see a video and go, or get called a name and they just change. That's not going to happen. That's not how it's going to work. And that battling with them is, is obs it's just pointless. They're not listening to you. They're never going to do what you say. It's just you getting out your frustration and them getting out their frustration. That's it. That's just the dance. But they're working you down and working themselves up. And since you're a normal person and you don't have this disorder, this is a dysfunctional relationship for you. In other words, it doesn't function for you. It functions great for the narcissist. It doesn't function for you though. So you go down and they go up. This is not a functional relationship. So battling is absolutely pointless here. Also, stop arguing with them all together. You don't argue with them anymore. You don't defend yourself anymore. Well, I have to see it. No, you don't defend yourself anymore. That's another narcissistic trick. You don't have to defend yourself. You are just, you are allowed just as much as a narcissist to say whatever the hell you want in any way or want every, anything you want 
anytime you want. You don't have to explain everything. And narcissists get you into such a state where you feel you have to explain everything. You don't have to explain everything. If you want to sit down and fall asleep in the middle of the day on a Saturday when you're supposed to be busy, you can do that if you want. How dare you? Right? You have to explain everything to them. You don't have no more explaining and no more arguing because that's where they get the supply and that's where they knock you down some more. And they have another thing. This is kind of like what a narcissist does. It's not really a technique because they do it themselves too, like gaslighting. And it's helpful for them, I guess, but it's not helpful for you. What they do is they personalize everything. Everything is deeply personal. It's not, you don't have habits that you go through in life and you, you do stuff and it's great or it's not great. That's not how the narcissist sees it. You go through stuff in life because of who you, what you are. If you learn some habits on how to make money and now you're monetarily superior to other people, you know, most people would say, well, I have a lot of money in a bank account, but I, I don't know about your car. I don't know about who you are. I'm not a good judge of character or I'm not, you know, a connoisseur of wines or I'm not, but the narcissist doesn't believe that. The narcissist believes when they are superior at something, they're superior, period, end of the story. So especially if they are superior at earning money, they might have learned to have it. Who knows? They might have inherited it all or may have made some good decisions. But now they think they are superior because they are superior in something. Now they can tell you, they can look down at you and honestly look down at everybody else. They're gonna be doing that anyway, even if they're not really superior at anything. So yeah, you're going to have to fully accept that this relationship is never gonna change. It's never gonna grow. That's not what narcissists do. You have to grow. You don't have a personality disorder. You have to grow. So this relationship, it's a zombie relationship. You just let it shamble on to whatever else zombies do and you go on with your life. So you're going to have to accept that this is a zombie relationship. There's nothing you can do with it. You can't bring it back from the dead and they don't want to come back from the dead. They just want to attack you. So you have to move on. You have to give it up. You have to give this relationship. And it's weird because it, you, like I say, it's a zombie relationship. It's not dead. You can't bury it and get closure. It's still happening, but it's never going to be what you want it to be. It's never going to go anywhere. It's never going to live. It's never going to thrive. And yet it's not dead. So you have to kind of have that closure in yourself and realize this is it. This is as good as it's ever going to get. And when I, when I realized that in my relationship with the narcissist, it was a game changer. It was huge because then why am I in this thing? Why am I doing this? <laughs> and for the narcissist, the narcissist is like, I don't know why. Maybe you just like being abused. <laughs> I don't know. That's where it was. And it was crazy. And I'm so glad I'm out. Okay, so after you've done all this other stuff and you've decided you're not going to call the narcissist out, you're going to gray rock them and you're just going to, you're not going to give them any juicy tidbits about your life. You're not going to let them get their hooks in you and play you for a dummy uh, puppet, honestly. You're not going to argue with them and all that other stuff. You're not going to explain to them, defend and all that other stuff. And so what do you do if you're still stuck within these four walls? You're going to have to get support out of those four walls. The narcissist likes their safe space. They like the door closed so that, and the windows closed and the walls because they like a safe space where they can abuse you and not be seen as an abuser to the outside world. That's right. That's why the narcissist usually loves to abuse their people in their life. Uh, as soon as they get into the car or as soon as they get behind closed doors. They don't do it when they're out in public. They do it when they're in that safe space. But that, that's a little getting off the point. 
And you need to get outside of that safe space so that you can have allies and supports in the outside world that support you as a, as a real person, not as a victim. And one of the things to do about that is to have an inner circle of supportive people. Okay, you have, well, I call them allies. Now, allies are like allies and nations. They come to your defense. No questions asked, they're gonna be there. If you get attacked, they're gonna come to your defense. They might not you know, show up at the doorstep of the battle, but they're gonna be there to help and they're definitely gonna make a difference in how you feel about things and how you uh, survive those things. And what that inner circle looks like is it looks like it's allies. I mean, it's, it's people that are gonna help you and they're never gonna run you down, they're never gonna devalue you, they're never gonna question you. These are gonna be like one to four, four max. It's probably gonna be like two or three. And these people get it. When you tell them about the narcissist, they get it. Or they, they try to get it. They're on your side. Now, your boundaries are probably a little fuzzy. You're not too sure what that might look like. So if somebody says they're on your side and they understand and they're sympathetic, and then you tell them that you're living with a narcissist and they say, well, whoa, 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 you're not a psychiatrist. You can't make a diagnosis on somebody. They're not the one. And cross them out. No, because they're not supporting you. How do they know that this person is not a narcissist? If you say they're a narcissist, that's better than any other advice that they have about this situation. And they're supposed to be supporting you. They're supposed to have your back. Now, it's the same thing with a physical abuser. Abuser. If you're being choked by somebody, right, in your home, <laughs> you don't need to have an official document saying that this person is violent. Right? You say this person is violent. That's okay. It doesn't have to be diagnosed by a doctor. And the same thing here. If you're being, if your life is being choked out of you, if, and you have to go to these other people to explain yourself to them too, then they're not your inner circle. They can be your acquaintances, but they're not your inner circle because they don't really have your back. They don't really get it. And they're not really there to support you. They, I don't know what that is. So just to clarify, your inner circle gets to hear you about your triumphs, your tribulations, your successes and your failures, and anybody outside that inner circle does not. They don't get, and that includes the narcissist in your life. That especially includes the narcissist in your life because they're gonna use all that stuff against you. So you definitely, this is where the gray rocking comes in. It doesn't have to be totally, um, you don't say anything ever to them. It's not the silent treatment. You just give them, it, it's like uh, on the battlefield, you just give them small amounts of useless information. So they can't use whatever they get against you. You're talking about the weather, you know, they're not going to be able to use that against you. So now you have maybe this inner circle or you're thinking about getting it. And what will happen is that you'll have these few individuals that get your, uh, your situation in life, that create a safe space for you to be a person, be a human being, be a natural human being, to grow and to come into your own again, or maybe the, for the first time. And these people also validate you. Unlike with a narcissist constantly invalidates you. You know, you bring something up, say like this. So say you won some award at work. Oh, let's say you got a raise at work. That's always good, right? Always a, a raise is always good, right? Not that a narcissist it isn't. <laughs> so you tell the average person, I got a raise at work. They say, oh, wow, that's, that's pretty nice. That's good. Congratulations. Many more to you. Okay, the narcissist is gonna say this. Ah, oh, you got a raise, great. They've been taking advantage of you for years. You should be getting a lot more than that. You should speak up more. You should go in there and demand more because they're just, they're just using you because you're a patsy. You take whatever they give 
and that's it. And now look at you. It's pathetic, right? That's what the narcissist would do, right? <laughs> so it went from this, this good thing <laughs> that's happening and a narcissist bill, it's always bad and you're pathetic. Now, your inner circle is going to validate you. They're going to be the ones that you can open up. I wouldn't even tell, uh, of course, you're not going to tell the narcissist about your grades. That's, that's off the charts. But your friends that are not in the inner circle, you might tell them about your raise. You know, they have good things. Some of them might not have good things about it, you know. You know, they might ask you how much you're making and try and evaluate you. And, and yeah, the inner circle doesn't do that. The inner circle is so supportive. It's crazy supportive people that get your situation, that get you, your situation, the narcissist, and are there to help you all the time. So how, see how this is so much better than checking into the battle royale? I just saying, you're a narcissist, let's have arguments, and uh, you say this, and I'll say that, and, and I'll bring up this video I saw about, about how pathetic you are, and then the narcissist will say how pathetic you are. That doesn't help, man. <laughs> that does not help. All this stuff I mentioned right here helps. Matter of fact, I should probably put that in the, in the description, right? Um, Oh, because it all does help and I've used it all this stuff really works it's and it's it's doesn't cost anything telling a narcissist that they are a narcissist does cost you something it's gonna cost you more of your sanity more of your nervous system honestly it degrades your health because when you're on a battlefield even if it's a psychological battlefield it does degrade your health I've mentioned about a dozen times, half a dozen times on here, about a person that had to put up with a narcissist. She didn't live with the narcissist. The narcissist was a family member that lived down the road. And when she moved away, her diabetes almost went away. Her numbers came way down. She was 100, you know, 100 to 200, and she was fighting to keep it down. And now it gets so low, the alarm goes off on her, her devices. That's what it does to us physically. It tears us down. And that wasn't even a close relationship. So a blood pressure, uh, everything, it, you can really mess up your body just by living with or around a narcissist. So don't make it worse by calling them out and going into a huge battle. All the stuff I mentioned works a whole lot better. So the realization that wraps this all up is just the realization that calling the narcissist out is just you wanting to fight some more. It's just you wanting retribution in the form of fighting to say you are this and you are wrong and you need to change and blah, blah, blah. It's never going to do any good. They're not listening to you anyway. We already went over that and you agreed with it. You had to because if you live around an narcissist, you know they don't listen to you. Not really. It doesn't go in. They just use your words and then they twist them back around and they throw them back at you. And then you're just, you're falling back into the trap and then they, the narcissist has you all over again and you didn't escape. I mean, do you want to be in a perpetual trap with them? But all this other stuff will help. I've tried it all. It definitely helps. And I hope it helps you too. So I hope this all helps you. Let's get on to live our best lives. That's what this all this information is for. To live our best lives. Not to have a battle, but to live our best self. Let's go. Let's do that.